G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be having a look at a brand new aircraft to come to the game, the very, very unique MiG-23MF. This has come to the game as part of a reward for the Operation Winter, which is honestly not a bad reward considering the amount of work that you actually put in. These types of events are much more attainable than things like the crafting events, which are absolutely horrific and terrible. But ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be having a look at if this plane is actually worth it and whether or not... Hold on. I I'm just getting some information from production and they're telling me that the MiG-23 MF is pretty much a copy-paste of, of... No, it can't be. It, it can't be. Pictured on screen is definitely the MiG-23 MF. This plane is definitely got six missiles and has got a fairly good amount of speed unique swing wings and of course those incredible 12 flat oh 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 they are the same oh oh that's wonderful they gave it a new camo oh oh in that case if you like copy paste vehicles well the mig 23 mf is just for you it is quite literally identical to the mig 23 m in the russian tech tree but it's an event vehicle so it'll probably sell on the gaijin marketplace for some decent money and with that decent money, you can probably go and buy yourself a nice premium to grind up the ranks of another tech tree. Or alternatively, you can use this thing, suffer through the horrible teams for the next three weeks and enjoy the uh, swing wings because Germany doesn't get swing wings at this point. And um, it's one of the many nations that doesn't because at this point, I'm pretty sure it's only the Russians that get swing wings. So the MiG-23 MF. Like I've said in the MiG-23M video, I don't believe this plane is particularly powerful. Now, it has also been superseded since that point by things like the F4EJ Kai, the Vigan, the now Kfir, which is a better dogfighter and I believe is a similar top speed. You've also got the F4J and of course the F4E and the uh, F4EJ are still quite strong against things like this, particularly because this thing does not have many countermeasures. Now, for those of you that know me, I prefer planes that have higher counts of countermeasures because that gives me more opportunities to play a little bit more on the front foot. And that's the type of gameplay that I personally like. Now, don't get me wrong, if you enjoy the support playstyle of the MiG-23 MF, then you're going to actually have a good time. If you have the MiG-23 M and you enjoy it, then you are probably going to have a good time in this plane once the terrible teams die down. But if you're new to jets or if you're someone who's looking to get into top tier, this plane is actually not a very user-friendly plane. It's one of those things that takes a lot of practice and that's simply because it is not a forgiving plane. If you put yourself in a bad situation, you are most of the time going to end up dead or swarmed or both because that is the way that the MiG-23 MF plays. It's a very, very front foot only type plane or a very, uh, a plane that plays only when it's in an advantage or when you've got lots of teammates. Now in this particular match I'm going to show you the best case scenario for this plane. Uh, I'm going to be engaging here with a couple of enemies that have sort of flown by and ignored me. The J7E uh, manages to sneak away from the R60. Now this thing does get R60MKs which at the moment perform functionally identical to R60Ms. Uh, full aspect 30G and of course, they are still very, very susceptible to flares. Now, I am being locked here by this F4E, and it looks like it could probably be an EJ um, with the pulse Doppler moment radar. And I'm just going to be curling it around. This plane in a one versus one dogfight will actually beat an F4E and will actually beat every Phantom, uh, including the F4F early, I believe. Uh, but you will struggle against things like the Kvir. You'll struggle against things that are anywhere lighter than the uh, than the F4E. Now, I do get a lucky shot here, and I do have some teammates to back me up, and this is why I am doing so well, the F4E bails. Uh, and now I've got three enemies that are rapidly closing the distance, and this is starting to be a little bit of a pressure point here because I cannot afford to lose all of my speed. Whilst it sounds strange, this thing does have swing wings, and it can straighten its wings out for some excellent low speed performance, you don't actually want to get near those low speeds because once you do, you'll have a hard time gaining them back in uh, situations where your opponents are quite close. Now, in a one versus one, this works out quite well because you can pretty much just turn as much as you want and get some nice reversals like, like this one, where the F4J is about as fat as an F4C. So you are going to be able to dogfight those types of things, but 
if the cr cr uh, Crusader was to pop out of the clouds, for example, or if an F5 was to pop out of the clouds, you would pretty much be boned and there's not a whole lot you can do, including flares, because you've only got 12. The MLD has a larger amount of flares and they've also got uh, the nice big bright flares. So your flares are somewhat equivalent to that of your Phantoms, which puts it on an even playing field in the terms of uh, defensive type maneuvers. Now, again, I'm just getting lucky here. The, the only reason why I'm doing well in this plane is because I'm getting lucky. And I found in the numerous games that I've played that I have not enjoyed the MiG-23 MF because the MiG-23 MF is practically the same as the MiG-23 M. And I only enjoyed that because it was a little bit more top of the line back then. Having the, I believe it was the second plane to have look down, shoot down capabilities after the uh, British Phantoms. Now, you will notice that I am carrying the R-23Rs and these are the radar guided R23s simply because in the past I've had a fairly uh, hairy experience and now that everyone's got more flares and brighter flares uh, I'm more inclined to use these types of missiles. That being said your radar I believe isn't quite as good and there's a, a really really good video by a guy called Pillycast and I'll, I'll link your video the video in the description below. Go and check it out it's about I think it's four minutes long and it outlines exactly my qualms with the uh, MiG-23 MF quite, quite well. What I believe is going to happen is that this plane is going to be very rapidly superseded by a tech tree variant of the MiG-23 in the German tech tree. I believe that they are going to get a similar plane to the MiG-23 MLD and that could be the MiG-23 MLA which is more or less the same thing. So they're basically going to pull an F7F early on you Oh, an F4F early, sorry. They're going to be taking a plane that is otherwise sort of a double-edged sword, one that has very low potential or has very high potential to be killed and very low potential to avoid that in the form of uh, low countermeasures, and you're going to strap it into the event tree and hype everyone up for it and then make some money and then finally introduce a much better version that uh, people will have to grind for anyway. So my personal recommendation is to stay away from this plane because I don't believe that it is going to get much better in the meta as it stands. Could it be down tiered to a lower battle rating? I think that's entirely possible, but I think if they do this, then they're going to have to down tier the MiG-23M as well because these planes are quite literally copy paste with a different skin. And so what I believe is that, uh, yeah, you should, you should probably skip this plane. I'm sorry to say, but it, like if you're a collector, by all means, Go and go and enjoy this plane. Have fun. Once the team settle down, you'll probably do like kind of okay. If you like the MiG 23M, if you like that support play style, go and play that. But I would rather play this thing. This is the MiG 21 BIS SAU and is one of the a little bit more competitive, I would say, 11.3s. Whilst it doesn't have any pulse Doppler radar, it has R60Ms and it also has access to R13s and R3Rs. So you do have a fairly uh, enhanced suite of capabilities. More importantly, you are more able to dogfight your opponents. And for me, that's the kicker. To top it off, you've also got more flares, which makes you a little bit more competitive in the defensive, which is exactly my issue with the uh, MiG-23 MF. I don't have any capabilities to defend myself when I'm surrounded by three or four enemies. Whereas in this plane, I can at least stand a chance. And for me, that's what really makes or breaks a plane. And, and that's exactly what's broken the uh, MiG-23M for me. Now, speaking of breaking, I'm gonna break that F5C with the MiG-21 BISS R60MKs. It does get the same missiles, and I'm firing these at really close range to give the F5s as little time as possible while still slowly ducking out of the way using that seeker head. Uh, I'm gonna go for some friendlies here and see if I can give them a hand. This MiG-23 is looking pretty fresh, so I'm gonna go for that guy and hopefully get them nice and close. There we go, releasing that missile super uh, late and coming in nice and fresh with that uh, big, fat, juicy hit. Now, the MiG-21 BIS SAU is practically a copy-paste of the MiG-21 BIS in the Russian tech tree, with the exception of all aspect missiles. It gets the M missiles, whereas I believe the R60s are the only option available to the MiG-21 BIS in terms of the uh, IR, or the best IR missiles. So this plane is very much so a support plane, but you do get that added ability of turning. 
And whilst you have all of those bells and whistles that you don't in the MiG-23 MF, you still aren't the top dog after all of this. But you know, you can still use that to your effect, to your uh, advantage. Now this F-8U looks really, really slow and it looks like he might still be a threat. So I'm gonna pick him off. Maybe that was a little bit of a rough call, but um, I think the threat's eliminated, so no harm done. Now, these particular matches in the, in the near future or in the like coming days, are going to be very, very much filled with pulse Doppler planes, and they're going to be filled with planes that can outturn the MF. I, I would predict that you're going to see a lot more of the F5Es coming back, uh, because personally, that's the kind of thing that I would take to uh, come up against the MiG-23M, just because it's so such a such a heavy plane. That's one of the, I guess, weapons of choice that you would take, simply because you can outturn it. You have uh, more flares. You have better missiles. The only thing that you don't have is that head-on capability, but all you need to do to defeat the head-on capability with the, with the Russians, just because it's so, uh, so primitive, you just need a couple of flares, and of course the F5E contains a bunch of those. Not only that, but it's also the same battle rating, so you're probably going to get all the juicy down tiers as well, which are full of MiG-23 MFs who think they're going to get some clubbing in, and uh, you're going to take them by surprise, because the MiG-23 MF is not a dogfighter. As much as that makes uh, zero sense, because the MiG-23 MLD is lighter than the MF and is actually capable of dogfighting things like the F-5, uh, albeit if you get super slow and you're bogged down by things like missiles and, and pylons, you are going to start to struggle. But if you can, in a short dogfight, in some cases you can take on F-5s in your MLD. In the MF, you're not going to stand a chance. You're not even you're not even going to stand half a chance. And I know because I've tried it in the MiG 23M, and I've try I will have obviously known that that is the same as the MiG 23MF. Now another sort of late missile head-on. These are these are kind of nice, kind of shiny, but um, very very risky. So definitely be careful. We're going to have a look at another match here with the MiG 21 BIS, and I'm just going to show you sort of more of its capabilities because. In the MLD, what you're looking at doing, or, or in the MF rather, what you're looking at doing is skirting the outsides, looking for kills of opportunity. Whereas with this plane, you have more options and you can be a little bit more uh, aggressive because you have that ability to turn. And of course, you have more countermeasures, which is much more beneficial. We have a Kvir, it's coming in nice and hot. It looks like I'm gonna try and sneak in, but he gets blown to shreds as soon as we uh, even get a lock on. Now, of course, this is all recorded before the spam of uh, MiG-23 MFs, so these gameplay, this gameplay footage isn't really tainted by the loss of these types of planes. Now, I do predict that the MiG-23 MF is going to come out with very poor statistics and is almost certainly going to go down in battle ratings simply because Gaijin sees they're balancing that way. Now, I hope I'm wrong. I sincerely hope I'm wrong, but these types of matches are the ones that are going to be the most frustrating for you guys to play who actually want your MF and want to play your MF. So my advice would be give it a couple weeks, settle it, let the matchmaker settle down a little bit, and then just enjoy your, your playing. Uh, do your best you can, of course, and uh, maybe work in a team, work in a squad. That would be my best advice because the MiG-23 MF is definitely uh, it has to be a team player. Now, speaking of team player, I am getting teamed up by these F4s. They've all made a pass on me, but I've got teammates around me and it's giving me an opportunity to sort of regain my focus here. The teammates have brought the attention away from me onto the enemies and now they're on the back foot. And of course, any of these heavier airplanes, when they're on the back foot, they're gonna struggle a little bit more. So the MiG-21 BIS is one of those planes that you can actually stay on the front foot because you are a little bit on the light side. Of course, you do get energy trapped, so you have to be mindful of that, but you have opportunities to save yourself. You have opportunities to turn the tides because you are so maneuverable. You can use the similar tactics that you might use in an F5 when you're dogfighting. You might uh, make turns that are a little bit broader than what you're capable of into, in order to lure your opponent into a false sense of security. Things like the MiG-23 MF, you simply can't do that because you're just too heavy and you end up retaining a lot of that speed and even in a plane like the uh, like the F4, you can still catch up or you can still stay on the target. And for me, that's that's a deal breaker. And I hope you understand that I don't really want to be negative, but I seriously just think that this is a lousy cash grab because Gaijin know that they have an audience here where they can make money, that being German fanboys 
needing a, uh, a Russian plane and saying, oh my God, this Russian plane is so good. But in reality, it's, uh, it's the one below the good one. And they've released it late because it's uh, a little bit more profitable to make it that way. And I feel, I feel really bad for people who genuinely enjoy the German aviation tree and just want a nice competitive top tier with radar missiles. I genuinely feel bad because you guys are getting milked and I feel like that's unfair to you guys. And I feel like that's the wrong way to do things. What Gaijin should have done is given us something a little bit more unique. Now, of course, the MiG-23 MF would have been okay, but maybe not as an, as an event plane. I also understand that event planes aren't meant to be game-breaking, meta-changing, etc, etc. But at the same time, something that's a little bit less disappointing. I don't know if that sounds a little bit too, not selfish, but a little bit too entitled. Uh, I, it certainly makes me feel a little bit sad for those people that were genuinely anticipating something quite unique or something quite interesting. Whereas what they've really gotten is copy paste that you should really just either hold on to for a while and sell or wait for the teams to, to really get back to normal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to really leave it on a bad note because I don't really like to be negative, but I'll have some more content for you soon. In the meantime, check out social media pages. If you'd like to support the channel, of course, there are some, description, there are some links in the description below. You can buy my decal, which gives you a 3% discount on the War Thunder store, and that helps me out too. But until then, take care, and I'll catch you next time.